On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, a U.S. destroyer shoots down cruise missiles and drones heading to Israel. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercogliano. Welcome to today's episode. So on What's Going On with Shipping, we look at commercial shipping and the role of commercial shipping. But at times, we will look at naval aspects, particularly when it could impact trade and commerce going to and from countries. Today, we're looking at an incident that took place in the Red Sea involving the USS Kearney, a Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, and shooting down several cruise missiles and drones launched from Yemen heading to Israel. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be alerted about new videos as they come out. So here's the story from the Department of Defense. Uh, DOD responds to attacks, continued efforts to deter spread of the Israel-Hamas war. DOD assets in the Red Sea, Iraq, and Syria responded to missile and drone attacks over the past two days as U.S. service, me service members looked to deter groups from using the Israel-Hamas war as an opportunity to launch conflict that could engulf the region, Pentagon Press Secretary, Air Force Brigadier General Pat Ryder said. We're going to focus on the incident involving USS Kearney as the main thing. Uh, it says here, rise of the crew of the guided missile destroyer Kearney operating in the northern Red Sea earlier today shot down three land attack cruise missiles and several drones launched by the Houthi forces. Quote, this action was a demonstration of the integrated air and missile defense architecture we built in the Middle East and we are prepared to utilize whenever necessary to protect our interests. He said there were no casualties. Goes on to say, we cannot say for certain what these missiles and drones were targeting, but they were launched heading north along the Red Sea, potentially toward targets in Israel. Uh, it goes on that there were detailed drone attacks on U.S. facilities in Syria and Iraq. So we're seeing attacks being launched from southern Saudi Arabian Peninsula, the country of Yemen, which has been involved in the civil war. Not the first time we've seen the Houthi down there launch missiles and try to attack targets. Now, the U.S. has set in motion several elements here to help deter the expansion of the Israeli-Hamas war. In particular, the U.S. is aiming to prevent the outside elements interacting on this, specifically Hezbollah in Lebanon, Iran, and obviously the Houthi and, and Yemen uh, area. And to do that, the U.S. has several assets in the area on the sea. The first is a carrier strike group centered around the USS Ford. The Ford strike group was just ending its tour in the Mediterranean. It has a guided missile cruiser with it, the Normandy, and then several Burke-class destroyers. The Ford was slated to be relieved and head back to the United States. It has been extended out there. The Ford was operating initially up in the Adriatic and the central Mediterranean, launching, launching air patrols because of Russia, Ukraine, but now it has moved into the Eastern Mediterranean. And it's in a modified location just southwest of Cyprus. The Eisenhower Battle Group has sorted from the United States. It is heading across the Atlantic right now. It consists of an aircraft carrier, the Dwight David Eisenhower, second oldest aircraft carrier in the United States Navy, a cruiser of the Philippine Sea, and several Burke-class destroyers. This is part of a routine swap out, but what we're hearing now is that the Eisenhower will remain uh, alongside the Ford in the Mediterranean. This makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. When you're flying sorties off an aircraft carrier, while you can replenish it at sea, you are going to start wearing down the air group. Uh, you need downtime, you need ship maintenance, aircraft maintenance, you need your pilots to get a rest. And understand, they'll be flying a lot of sorties at this time. The air complement in an aircraft carrier, beyond having four squadrons of Hornet, strike Hornets, that can be used for air attack missions will also be flying combat air patrols. They will be loading out some of those aircraft with strike packages just in case they're needed immediately. You'll be flying your E2D uh, Hawkeyes. These are the big air surveillance aircraft. You'll have your helicopters up and running, your CODs, your E2s, uh, C2s, excuse me, will be shuffling back and forth from land to it. You're going to get a lot of wear and tear on the ships. So having a second aircraft carrier there will allow you to pull back the first one, let it sit down for a day or two, and then come back up. We also see there are underway replenishment vessels in this area. The Laramie, in particularly, provided the underway replenishment for the Ford Battle Group. 
when it's sorted from the Western Med to the Eastern Med, we just saw her go into Augusta, Sicily. There's a big defense logistics agency fuel depot there. She topped off and is headed back to the Eastern Mediterranean. The stores and ammunition ship Medgar Evers is on station with them, providing the uh, food, uh, the the ammunition, uh, the food, and all the sustenance they need. The Eisenhower Battle Group, when it's sorted from Norfolk, met an oiler, uh, the Kanawa off the coast of Virginia, topped itself off, and then the Eisenhower took off across the Mediterranean, probably not at full speed. A, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier can fly. I mean, it can do over 40 knots. I've seen one do 43. So it can go fast, but it would leave behind its escorts. And plus, if the escorts are going at full bore, they're going to deplete their fuel supply. I believe the USNS Supply, an AOE, this is a combat store ship. It's a little bit of an oiler and a ammunition and dry store ship all combined into one, is sailing with them. And there is another oiler in the Mediterranean, just came out of the shipyard in Croatia, the Leroy Grumman. Add to this, you also have the Amphibious Strike Group coming in, or Amphibious Ready Group coming in. This is the Bataan, the Carter Hall, and the uh, Mesa Verde coming in. One of the reasons why you're bringing the Bataan and the Carter Hall from the Persian Gulf into the Mediterranean is you want that big deck. Uh, we're concerned about American hostages in Gaza. If for some reason there is a rescue operation that's going to be mounted, you'll probably want that big deck to launch V-22 Ospreys, helicopters, CH-53s. You'll want to be able to use that vessel so you can plant it off the, the coast of the Gaza Strip and use them for the base so you're operating from U.S. territory. You also have a whole batch of other vessels in and around the area. The Mount Whitney, which is the flagship of the Sixth Fleet, will be there. That'll have the three-star admiral who's in charge on board. Uh, you're going to have a big presence in this area, and a lot of destroyers, Burke-class destroyers, will be in and around the area. Some of them will be providing protection for these naval assets, but others are going to be used for missile defense in the area to prevent outside forces from striking Israel with their missiles and aircraft. So this is the story over at USNI News, Sam Legrone and Heather Magilio. US Destroyer uses SM2s. SM2s are the standard missiles that are used to down three land attack missiles launched from Yemen. Uh, it goes on here, the shoot down of three missiles and a number of drones from Houthi controlled territory in Yemen, according to a Pentagon official. And cruise missiles going from Yemen to Israel, that's a long distance. It's over a thousand miles. And so we're talking about some serious distance involved. I'm also wondering about these drones because this is not a DJI drone. Uh, you're talking about well over a thousand miles from Yemen to Israel. So you're talking about some big, sophisticated hardware that's involved in this. Now, the Houthi have done attacks in the past. Go back to 2016. This is the former high-speed vessel Swift, used by the Military Sealift Command for many years. Then the vessel was sold to the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, and this vessel was struck by missiles launched by the Houthi out of Yemen, down at the very southern tip of the Red Sea, what's called the Bab el-Mandab. This is the narrow strait between the southern tip of Saudi Arabia, or the Arabian Peninsula, and the Horn of Africa. This, in turn, led to a missile strike against a U.S. Uh, destroyer, the Mason. And back in 2016, the Mason shot down several missiles that were fired at it from this Houthi site. So not unusual for the U.S. to be dealing with the Houthi in Yemen. This is the position of the Ford uh, based on some estimated positions. A lot of people are tracking the Ford right now, although she's not showing up on AIS. This is the automated information system. This is the transponder for ships. What they're seeing is aircraft, largely those CODs, those carrier onboard delivery aircraft, the C2s. They're tracking them and they got a good general area where they're operating. This is a good area for the Ford to operate in, southwest of Cyprus. This is outside the main shipping lanes. When aircraft 
aircraft carriers are launching aircraft. They're restricted in their ability to maneuver. They have to steer into the wind at very high speed, so they can't maneuver to avoid vessels. They don't want to be in traffic with commercial vessels because commercial vessels don't care. Uh, they're going to cross as close, and they try to avoid changing course as much as they can. So the Navy is going to try to find a deserted part of the ocean. And in the mid, that's really tough because it's really busy out there. But southwest of Cyprus, probably the best spot. Also, they want to be within striking distance if they need to launch their aircraft. The uh, Hornets are not very long range, so you've got to get fairly close to them. Yes, they'll have aerial, uh, aerial refuelers available if necessary, but you still got to be close in. And probably the other element you'll see operating even closer in are some of the Burke-class destroyers. These are the uh, destroyers that have the spy uh, radar, the Aegeus system. Aegis will be used to be able to detect multiple targets. They've got the standard missiles on board, and there'll be a good missile shield out there. A lot of talk about what happened back in 1967 with the Liberty. That was a U.S. surveillance vessel that was sailing off the coast of Egypt and Israel that was attacked by the Israelis. We know it was attacked by the Israelis. They admitted it. Uh, killed many Americans on board this vessel. That is a much different situation in 1967 than in 2023. First off, uh, we were monitoring both Israel and Egypt. Uh, there was The Israelis said they didn't know it was an American ship. Hard to understand that based on the how the vessel was adorned with American flags. But what we know now is Israel would not want to attack American ships because American ships are helping them immensely in this situation. But the potential for ships to get hit is always out there, especially in congested environments and in a war situation. So there's got to be a lot of concern about safety of American ships. While I'm talking specifically about the Navy here, there's a big U.S. military presence there. The U.S. Air Force has sorted F-15s, F-16s. A-10s. We know that they're being based in and around the area, uh, Inserlik Air Force Base uh, in Turkey, Abril in Iraq. Uh, there is probably a large presence out there. The uh, Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq, we know this. There's, there's military presence out there. And one of the things that the U.S. is really wanting to do is prevent the war expanding. So they're watching Hezbollah in southern Lebanon and in Syria. They're watching Iran, obviously, and they're watching Yemen here. So let's talk about the incident involving the Kearney. So Kearney guided missile destroyer uh, it has been modified to deal with ballistic missile defense. This destroyer was one of several destroyers that were based in Rota, Spain for a long time. There's still a squadron based there, six destroyers based there. Uh, Carney had been in Rota from 2015 to 2020. She redeployed back to Mayport. She's on a cruise in the Mediterranean right now. She wasn't attached to the Eisenhower Battle Group, but this destroyer has that capability uh, really geared up for anti-ballistic missile defense and anti-air defense. This is... Carney going through the Suez Canal. This is a DOD photo that was done. One of the things you'll notice about this image is she went through on 18 October. She is the first ship in the convoy. There is nobody in front of her. U.S. warships and warships in general will be pushed to the front of the convoy of uh, a Suez Canal transit. I'm going to run this for you. This is Marine Traffic AIS. This is as of 18 October, about 0230 UTC time. You'll see a gray vessel here identified as U.S. government vessel. That is Kearney. Uh, you'll see Kearney will be the lead ship coming into the convoy here as she heads into the Suez Canal heading southbound. She is given the priority. She is leading the convoy in, and she's going to go ahead and head downbound into the Suez. Now, what's interesting about it, she is squawking her AIS at this point for identification so that she can be tracked as she heads south through the Suez. Uh, this gives her a time of coming in. This is 18 October. We're coming right around to 0800 here, and you'll see U.S. government vessel will disappear. They turn off their AIS as they head into the uh, uh, Great Bitter Lake, but the convoy will keep moving. Uh, they're passing the other convoy, the northbound convoy, as they come in, and now here they come. You'll see the ship Mine Shift 2 heading southbound. That's a cruise ship. We know that Carney was in front of her at the time, although she's not showing up yet 
on AIS, and she will clear into the Red Sea approximately about 1300 UTC time on the 18th. So we know when she went through the Suez Canal. So this is an imagery I pulled off from Twitter, uh, at Putin is a virus. Uh, <laughs> I followed at Putin is a virus quite a bit. He did some great early uh, images of yachts uh, being seized from Putin. He's obviously not a big fan of Putin, but he grabbed this satellite image here. Uh, it talks about U.S. Carney photograph while transiting the Suez on uh, October 18th. Uh, shadows tell us it was approximately 4.30 GMT. We know the exact time based on marine traffic when she's going in. Plus, she's going under one of the bridges there. Uh, this is her about uh, 8.31 GMT or UTC time. Uh, again, universal time coming in. Your, uh, Carney was caught by two satellites, uh, uh, a Sentinel-2 satellite in location consistent with regular cruising speed after Suez Transit. This is from Suez, the very end of the canal, down to the, uh, the Bab el Mandab is 1,200 miles, nautical miles. That is, at 35 knots, a 40-hour run. So that is a long run heading down the coast. And the question is, why did Carney go through the Suez Canal when she was part of the elements in the Mediterranean? And I think it's there's a couple of options here. Number one, was she off to go do a Persian Gulf cruise? So was this a part of a normal transit, a normal scheduled transit? I, I don't think so. It's possible, but I think that's unlikely. I think what is more than likely is intelligence gave word of possible attacks here out of Yemen, missile strikes that were coming out. And so they wanted to send one of their BMD destroyers, ballistic missile defense destroyers, down into the Red Sea to set up a kind of guard station for it. Uh, you will notice where she is. She's actually east of the main track. The main track is running right through here, heading down. She seems to be east of that track, closer into Saudi Arabia. If the Houthi launch a strike out of Yemen, that missile is going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be in the Red Sea, and what we heard in the DOD report is that the missiles followed along the Red Sea. Uh, so it's either going along the Red Sea heading toward Israel, or it'll take a direct route, which will be over Saudi Arabia. And this is where you get into the political element here, and I, I'm not going to lie, there's a little bit of supposition by me, so I want to be clear about this. Uh, I don't have any intelligence beyond what we've been able to piece together. This is the area where they expect the Kearney to have been. This is the 130 kilometer range of SM2s. We know they used SM2s, not SM6s for this strike. So this gives you kind of the approximate range of where the, the missiles are. So either the missiles came up the Red Sea using uh, their, their navigation to use that distance, or they went at, over Saudi Arabia. If they went over Saudi Arabia, there is an issue about, well, why didn't the Saudis shoot them down? The Saudis are in negotiations right now with the Israelis. They've stepped back from it uh, temporarily. Uh, they probably don't want to be charged with defending Israel. And so it's unlikely the Saudis would have taken shots with their own surface to air missiles to try to knock down these cruise missiles coming out of Yemen. And so what better way to do it than to put a US destroyer off the coast? This doesn't mean you have to put US Army uh, surface to air missile batteries in the Jeddah, Mecca, Medina, uh, Riyadh, the area there. Instead, you can have a U.S. destroyer sailing 12 miles off the coast of Saudi Arabia in international waters, and it can target them. I am deeply interested in knowing where these missiles were hit. Was it over the Red Sea? Was it over Saudi Arabia? But I think this goes to the larger image that we're seeing here right now that we're establishing this kind of area of a uh, zone around Israel where we're providing a missile shield basically to it. And so we're shooting down missiles coming out of Yemen. U.S. air bases, missile bases in Iraq are shielding Israel, uh, Israel from Iranian direct attacks coming that way. We will have, you know, uh, uh, surveillance planes up, E3s and, and, and uh, P8s and, and EA3s and all the different uh, uh, sonar surveillance, excuse me, not sonar, uh, electronic surveillance planes that are up in and around the area. We will put our guided missile destroyers to provide that umbrella in that area. So we're doing a lot to do this. And understand, the whole purpose of this 
is not to wrap us into World War III. That's not what it is, but it's to prevent the expansion of this conflict from between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. You don't want to start bringing in other players. Bringing in Iran and Saudi Arabia and all these other nations would be terrible because it would escalate to a larger conflict. And one of the things you'd love to use naval forces to do beyond protecting trade is to ensure that conflicts are deterred or at least limited as much as they can. The idea of missiles flying up and down the Red Sea is a big problem because there's a lot of commerce that goes up and down the Red Sea. And so having missile defense destroyers in the Red Sea, not a bad move because, again, those missiles could errantly target ships and we can see this happen. We don't know where those missiles were heading. Were they heading to Tel Aviv a lot, the, the port, the southern port of Israel, for example? We don't know. And so doing this is a pretty proactive move on the part of the U.S. government and the U.S. Navy. Uh, again, we're seeing in the Black Sea movement of grain, the issue of mine attacks. Now we're seeing missile attacks in the Red Sea. Again, you go back in the short history, you know, just within the past 50 years, uh, it was the Libyans who mined the Red Sea in the 1980s. In the mid-80s, in the mid -80s, we had, uh, throughout the 80s, actually, we had the tanker war between Iran and uh, Iraq in 87, 88. The U.S. got involved into it. So trade and shipping are foremost here in many ways. Uh, so the U.S. Navy is putting its its forces in place. And the question is, does Carney and other missile destroyers stay in place in the Red Sea? I think so. I think they're going to take up a position. I think the Carney will move closer down to Yemen. Uh, and you may see other vessels put into a similar position along with maybe other assets into the Persian Gulf and the Eastern Mediterranean. I hope this video helped. I hope you got some good information out of it. If you did, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment. I'm sure I'm going to get lots of comments. I do not know everything. I admit that right off the bat. If I made some mistakes, hey, let's have a conversation. You don't need to shout and yell at me but because one of the things I, I love is the forum of bringing together some smart-minded people. And you're smart-minded if you're watching this video. Leave some comments. Give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly subscriber. Until the next video, Sal, signing off.